Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. Today, I just wanted to go over a couple of ways of extracting somebody from a plain background. What I mean by that, by a plain background is probably something that's shot maybe in a studio or at least indoors where it's quite where it's quite neutral. Um, there's, there's certainly lots of different ways of doing this, but the technique that I'm, I want to go over today uh, involves the ability for busy, if you see what I'm saying. So that's why I like, for example, this image here um, of Danny B is this image of shot in a studio environment with a neutral background to begin with. Um, and I'll just I'll just show that to you now. Um, so I'll just turn that off. So yeah, so this was the original background. So yeah, very sort of neutral to begin with, but really I tend to do this with a lot of my studio backgrounds just to avoid any, you know, sort of lighter over here and it's got you know, funny, darkness over here and that sort of thing. It's just consistent and um, does make it a little bit distracting I suppose so I do tend to just add add a background um, and that, and this technique is great if I'm adding a background of the same color or the same tone for example because I'm going to be knocking it back to bring in some of the original underneath anyway. So what I mean is I'm going to basically apply a blue background to this. Um, so the simplest way of doing that is just going in um, and selecting the wand tool to begin with. So uh, the wand W um, and tolerance, uh, depending on the image, but I usually have mine set from anywhere from 10 to 20. Um, so, and I'm just gonna click around the image here. Um, it's quite a neutral background anyway. Uh, I've already cleaned up some of, the, some of the dust spots and that sort of thing. So um, it's not gonna be selecting those. I'm just gonna come in here and uh, get as as close to my correct sort of mask if you like um, and then just to make sure that this next step it goes as goes as smoothly as possible I'm just going to select these gaps in here as well so uh, looks good I'm just going to go into the uh, mask there and just double check that uh, everything's looking things looking normal or um, is there anything else specifically? Um, if I need to just come in and adjust that, then I can do. Um, I just come in here and, but like I said, I'm not going to be um, worried too much. But for example, just clean it up. I just want to get it as close as possible before I do the next step. So I'll come out of there um, and go back to my wand. And I'm just going to go up here to refine edge. Clicking on that. So this is a tool that uh, I certainly know has been in several versions of Photoshop, but it really did get um, as refined as it does now is to what I would call like a usable tool really um, in CS6, which is what, which is what this is. Um, and bringing up the Refine Edge tool brings up a variety of different options, but um, at the moment, you see it's gone back to that mask mask set, setting of the overlay of the red. That's what I have it on. You can, you can have it on marching ants or black or white or um, I just have it on overlay so I can actually see the bits underneath if, 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 if you see what I'm saying that makes um, next section here you want to come in and you want to tick the uh, edge edge detection smart radius um, and that's the little little magic tool that Photoshop's Photoshop's gonna help us out with in a in a second um, and I usually have mine set to dependent on the image again but to be fair I usually have it around any, anywhere from 10 to 10 to 15 um, I have that on I have mine on the adjust edge to smooth so that means that even though I haven't done anything yet I've just I've just opened up refine edge it's automatically applied uh, applied a sort of a, a four to the to the to the selection so for example it's going to get rid of any jaggy edges if you if you had any and that sort of thing by smoothing out the section itself it's not to be confused with feather which actually blurs the edge from selection to non-selection um, I have that set to zero personal preference I suppose and, and the contrast just um, that determines how harsh the transition is again based on your current selection that you've loaded up in here None of that probably makes any sense at the moment. It's probably something that you just need to play around with, have a go. Um, bearing in mind that a lot of these figures, especially with everything else in Photoshop, is also relevant to the size of the file that you bring in, because like the pixels here are relevant. This is about a three, twelve, eighteen, or something like that at, at two hundred and fifty. So that's usually usually what I 
what I work at. Um, and the next most important thing is just going to click on this little button here and this is our, our brush here. Um, and all I'm going to do, I'm just going to paint around the edges that I'm most concerned about, which for this particular instance is actually the hair. Okay, that's what that's what this whole whole thing is about. Um, I could have probably got away with doing the rest of it, magic wand, but the reason why I'm using smart radius is definitely um, the reason why I'm using refine edge. Sorry, is definitely because of this tool to use on on hair. So I'm just going over here um, and I'm just outlining the hair itself. So don't go just you know waving it all over the face or anything like that. You really do just want to keep it on on the hair. Um, then when you lift that off, that has already done a pretty good job, in my opinion, extracting the hair there, um, uh, or at least, sorry, selecting it um, accurately. Um, if you hold down the Alt key on, on a Mac, you can just add more, more paint back in there, or paint more s selection, if you like, um, and you can just refine it a bit like that. But yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just gonna. Okay, that then, and that'll bring me bring me back out into the main image with a marching ants. Job done. Right. Okay. Um, so once it's done that, I'm just going to create a new layer. I mean, it's up to you as to what you do with this selection. Now you can either save it as an alpha channel or a part if you want to do something like that. But um, I'm just going to uh, create a new layer, and I'm just going to hit the mask down here. So this is it here. As well, now that I put that on a separate layer and I'm not adjusting that in any way, um, I, I can always come back to it later on if I need to. Um, and if I hold down the command um, and, and select on there, that brings it brings it back up again. So now that I've got my mask, I'm just going to click back on my on my layer and I'm going to apply a background to that to that layer now. So I'm just going to come over here and hit the hit the grad tool um, and. Like I mentioned, I do want to keep it within the within the image, so I'm going to be using colours within the image. Um, sorry, just to just to bring up the eyedropper like that, you can hold hold down the, the Alt key when you're on the graduation tool. Um, alt key there, um, and then I want it to grad to the colour again that's in the image. So this will be the the darker end. I'm just going to hit X to flip the swatches, and then pick that down there as well. Great and. Now I'm just going to drag from top to bottom there. Perfect, that's my grad on the background, separate separate layer. Okay. So it's pretty good, really. Yeah, um, you know, you wouldn't nobody's gonna argue it argue with that heavily. Um, but like I said, because I'm using a similar colour and I'm just trying to even out the background, I do I do tend to drop that layer opacity back. Um, just so it sort of beds in a bit better with the actual background, usually around 50 to 60 percent is fine. And that really just just helps to leave going on in the background. Um, yes, I already, you know, in camera, I already did have a slightly natural vignette going on there, which is which is quite nice. You, you know, you might think, oh, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to lose that, but I can always add that vignette back afterwards as a, you know, as a separate. Um, gradient or anything like that um, and if I want to I can also incorporate that that mask again um, so just to just to finish up then just to highlight my point on the fact that this really does only work because that is literally only going to take you a couple of minutes if you, if you, if you wanted to do that just quickly with the one boom 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 um, refine refine edge um, just paint around the hair come out marching ants you know that is literally just going to take you a couple of minutes so it is quite a quick way of masking something out it's not really to be used if you're going to be changing the color dramatically let me just show you um, what i mean so if we just come in and have a lighter color um, and then graduate to darker color there we go i'll do hit command select that mask again um, and then hit the mask on this new layer there it is again um, Brilliant. I'm just going to turn off that original blue one and then I'll come back to my graduation tool and just drag that in there. So that's where you can see. See now, in, in fairness to myself, it is because uh, there was obviously a lot of blue in the image. Um, so there's hair as well as on the background, which was intentional at, at, at the time. So, um, But you can see see where that mask starts to fall down if you want to extract somebody perfectly. 
Um, but by all means, you know, you can go in there and refine it a lot more, etc., etc., and keep keep carrying on. But um, and that probably wouldn't be as noticeable if I hadn't used a blue light, to be fair. So, um, but yeah, there we go. So that's just a great way of adding backgrounds or extracting it from from backgrounds. Okay. Brilliant, guys. Well, thanks very much indeed for watching. I um, hope it's been useful. By all means, you can check out more of my tips and techniques on my website, uh, jakehicksphotography.com, um, and you can see some lighting examples and diagrams and bits and pieces on there, or by all means, head on, head on over to my Facebook page for regular updates. Have a great week, guys. Thanks very much indeed. Bye.